Department of Environment is proud to announce that it has successfully presented Antigua and Barbuda's sixth national report to the Secretariat for the Convention on Biological Diversity. As a signatory to the Convention on Biological Diversity, Antigua and Barbuda is required to submit national reports on our progress in the implementation of the objectives within the Convention. The most recent report outlines our progress in meeting the set national biodiversity targets which are based on the global Aichi targets. These are a set of 20 global targets under the Strategic Plan for Biodiversity 2011 to 2020. The sixth national report shows that we are making excellent headway in achieving these targets with 19 of 20 targets on track to be achieved by our set deadline. These targets have been grouped into five main categories. Let's have a look. Category 1. Address the underlying causes of biodiversity loss and normalize biodiversity in government and society. Biodiversity, which is the diversity of life on Earth, is essential to the healthy functioning of our local ecosystems. A healthy ecosystem provides us with clean air, fresh water, food, resources, and medicine. However, due to human population increase and development, there have been significant losses in biodiversity around the world, and more specifically, in Antigua and Barbuda. One of the categories detailed in the sixth national report outlines our plan to address the loss of biodiversity by mainstreaming biodiversity across government and society. This has been achieved in the following ways. One, by collaborating on biodiversity projects with government agencies, community groups, NGOs, and churches, such as the Development and Control Authority, Environmental Awareness Group, the Freetown Community Group, and the Precision Center. Two, through the creation of policy documents and legislation to include the Sustainable Island Resource Management Zoning Plan, the Environmental Protection and Management Act, the Fisheries Act 2013, and the Plant Protection Act 2012. Okay, so biodiversity means the diverseness of life. It's the diversity of animals, the diversity of plants, the diversity of microbes, and everything in between. So why is it important? Why is it important that each ecosystem have robust biodiversity? So let's think of, uh, for instance, a pond. A pond will have a variety of plant life, will have a variety of animal life, like fish, like tadpoles, like, and we'll have a variety of microbes. And all of these working together will create an ecosystem that's delicately balanced, that provides services for us. Mangroves and our coral reefs are especially important for small island developing states because we depend on them to protect us from storm surge, which we get with every storm, whether it hits the countries directly or not. Now, having robust ecosystems mean having a variety of biodiversity so having robust biodiversity is important in each ecosystem that means then that if you lose for instance a particular species of frogs or a particular species of plant life you have so many more to help make up for it so having robust biodiversity in ecosystems means being more resilient to climate change being more resilient to when disease processes come through your so through a system like when we had the lethal yellowing come through and destroy many of our palm trees but not all palm trees died some survived that's why it's important to have a diversity of life so many varieties are available so that there'll be one or at least two or three that survive that move on to make the next generations. Category two, reduce the direct pressures on biodiversity and promote sustainable use. Antigua and Barbuda has taken a number of steps to reduce pressure on biodiversity and promote sustainable use of our biodiversity resources. This includes the creation of a local area plan for Cashew Hill that will help to promote sustainable land usage while reducing the impact of climate change. It also includes the creation and revision of the Environmental Protection and Management Act 2019, otherwise known as the EPMA, which legislates the creation of the Environmental Information Management and Advisory System, IMAS, to provide data for the Department of Environment and stakeholders. 
With this system, Antigua and Barbuda has been able to create and improve protocols around managing land-based and marine ecosystems, such as helping to strengthen the Fisheries Act 2013. In addition, efforts are underway to eradicate invasive species, including working with border control officers to identify invasive alien species and carrying out projects to remove them from sensitive areas of the country. This includes the removal of rats from several offshore islands, which has promoted a significant rise in plant and animal biodiversity. Category 3 improve the status of biodiversity by safeguarding ecosystems, species, and genetic diversity. Antigua and Barbuda has also made great strides in safeguarding our ecosystems and the local species that live within them. We have achieved the protection of at least 10% of coastal and marine areas, including the Northeast Marine Managed Area, NEMA, the Cades Bay Marine Reserve, Pallister Reef, and Diamond Reef. Additional protection will be completed with the Path to 2020 project currently being implemented. Genetic diversity within Antigua and Barbuda has also improved. Thanks to the work of the Environmental Awareness Group, Flora and Fauna International, and several other local and international agencies, the Antigua racer snake has been successfully reintroduced to several small offshore islands. The offshore island of Redonda, once overrun by rats and goats, has now been cleared of these invasive species and has experienced a tenfold increase in land bird populations with significant increases in vegetation and other endemic animal species. You would think that birds are just a nuisance, right? Because I remember I used to get very annoyed because birds would wake me up on Saturday morning when I wanted to sleep in. But birds play such a, a crucial role in our lives. They provide so many ecosystem services. They, some of the birds, at evening time when the insects rise up, like mosquitoes, they eat thousands and thousands of mosquitoes for us, so they keep that population in check. And then also, some birds show the fishermen where the fish are, they tell us about the weather, they tell us if our surroundings are happy. So even now you can hear all these birds chirping and you come to work one day and you see a few dead birds here and you hear no birds at all, you know something is definitely wrong with the air. So they are environmental indicators. I mean they do a host of other things but imagine now that some birds they don't lay eggs in trees only. Sometimes some, they don't build nests, some of them. They might do a little scratch on the ground and lay their eggs there. So obviously that's an easy target for rats and mongoose to get to and so on the offshore islands again when there were rats and mongooses the bird populations weren't thriving so when we did remove the the rats and the mongooses the populations increased dramatically in some cases we saw 200% increases we saw 500% increases in bird populations we saw birds that we hadn't recorded before and all of this was after removing rats and mongooses from the offshore islands Meanwhile, the research unit and cotton station has helped to preserve Sea Island cotton and also cultivates a number of other plant species through sustainably managed farms. The Department of Environment, Forestry Division and the Ministry of Agriculture collect seedlings for propagation, while private entities such as Antigua and Barbuda Horticultural Society, Green Gold Tropical Gardens and Themba Biofuels have been preserving species of plants and even algae for propagation and further use. Category 4. Enhance the benefits from biodiversity and ecosystem services. A critical aspect of biodiversity is providing everyone with the ability to benefit from biodiversity and ecosystem services. This has been done through the development of a number of plans such as the National Adaptation Strategy Addressing Climate Change in the Water Sector, the National Integrated Water Resource Policy Statement, and the National Adaptation Strategy and Action Plan for Antigua and Barbuda. Antigua and Barbuda has also declared NEMA and Cades Bay Marine Reserve as protected areas. Category 5 Enhance implementation through participatory planning, knowledge management, and capacity building. Antigua and Barbuda has embarked on several initiatives to ensure that the knowledge and skills gained are passed on to the wider public through knowledge management and capacity building activities. 
These include having dialogue with the community stakeholders and the creation of a Fishers Association. The Department of Environment has also created the Environmental Information Management and Advisory System, IMAS, to help share and distribute knowledge among stakeholders and the public. Part 10 of the Environmental Protection and Management Act mandates the Department of Environment to manage our environmental data in a systematic manner. To that end, we have created what is known as the Environmental Information Management and Advisory System. So this is our national environmental GIS database. It stores data on several areas, for example, ecosystems. Um, if you look at the terrestrial, we have data on the forested areas as well as the mangrove wetlands. We also store data for marine ecosystems, data such as the coral reef and the seagrass assemblages. We also store data on protected areas. The, the data management units at the Department of Environment work very closely with the biodiversity unit in collating data to support reporting to the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity, specifically on the Sixth National Report. So we provided information for the protected areas, information for different ecosystems as well. And, uh, and yeah, we, it's important to, to represent and visualize the data that is available for the country and what better way to do it is to provide it and in these reports that go to, the, to these multilateral environmental agreements. Biodiversity is critical to the survival of a thriving Antigua and Barbuda. While we are pleased to have made great headway as detailed in the sixth national report, we will continue to improve our approach to biodiversity and commit to working with our stakeholders and the public to sustainably manage our biodiversity resources. The Department of Environment wishes to thank you for taking an interest in Antigua and Barbuda's progress and will continue to keep you informed. Remember, it is our responsibility to preserve our island's biodiversity today for the generations of tomorrow.